to trouble Zion. Learn to trouble Zion. Zion have a key that opens sinners hearts. Don't you trouble Zion. Don't you trouble them, trouble them. Don't you trouble Zion. Leave them alone. Don't you trouble Zion. Zion have a key that opens sinners hearts. Don't you trouble Zion. Don't you trouble them. Don't you trouble Zion. Don't you trouble Zion. Zion have a key that opens sinners' heart. Don't you trouble Zion. Leave them alone. Don't you trouble Zion. Don't you trouble them, trouble them. Don't you trouble Zion. Leave them alone. Zion have a key that opens sinners' heart. Don't you trouble Zion. Leave them alone. Don't you trouble Zion. Don't you trouble them. Don't you trouble them. Don't you trouble Zion. Zion have a key that opens sinners' heart. Don't you trouble Zion. Leave them alone. Don't you trouble Zion. Don't you trouble them. Don't you trouble Zion. Zion have a key that opens sinners' heart. Don't you trouble Zion. Don't you trouble them. Don't you trouble Zion. Leave them alone. Zion have a key that opens sinners' heart. Don't you trouble Zion. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to CBI, Chosen Bible Institute. Here at CBI, our school motto is from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verses 9. Hallelujah, glory to God. We are under an open heaven. Hallelujah. But we are a chosen generation, a royal people, a peculiar, for we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a peculiar people to show for the praise of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light hallelujah glory to i'm going to say it again hallelujah our school motto here at cbi is from the book of second peter chapter 2 verses 9 hallelujah and it read as it is written hallelujah for we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a peculiar people to show for the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous life one more for the holy ghost one more time for the holy ghost uh, hallelujah our school motto here at chosen bible institute uh, hallelujah is from the book of second peter chapter 2 verses 9 but ye uh, are a chosen generation a royal priesthood uh, a peculiar people to show for the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light uh, glory be to god this is the word of the lord that be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome. 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 Hallelujah. Welcome, brethren. Please tag and share and invite. Hallelujah. Your friends, your family, your relatives, your loved ones, so that they can be blessed on today. Hallelujah. Welcome. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This course is called Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Launch Sonship Program. The Launch Sonship Program. Sonship Program. Hallelujah. You know what sonship mean? Hallelujah. God not looking no more. He, I mean, he loved his servants. Hallelujah. He loved his children. Yes. Hallelujah. But we are sons of God. Amen. Hallelujah. When we become are born again amen hallelujah we are children of god hallelujah and becoming children of god hallelujah we become his servant hallelujah so we become now slave to righteousness hallelujah but god don't desire for us to just be slave or servant hallelujah he desire for us to be sons hallelujah sss slave servant son hallelujah slave to righteousness servant of god son of God. Amen. Hallelujah.
hallelujah so welcome to the launch sonship program hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah pray the teaching hallelujah here at cbi will encourage you will challenge you to not just be a slave hallelujah to righteousness not just be a son or um not just be a servant sorry of god hallelujah a servant of christ hallelujah but a son hallelujah but help you become a son of god i pray it will equip you mold you train you teach you to become a son of god amen that's why it's called the, the large sonship program we want to launch you into the sh to be into your sonship amen hallelujah you have done great as a slave to righteousness you have done great hallelujah as a servant of christ jesus as a servant of god now it's time hallelujah oh, to elevate to be promoted to the sonship hallelujah of god amen hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah 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 of course in your sonship it still recommends you being hallelujah the righteousness of god amen hallelujah being a slave to righteousness hallelujah and being a servant of god a servant of jesus christ amen hallelujah being a son doesn't require you to stop serving god or serving jesus christ or stop living a righteous life no you gotta continue in that Instead, amen hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah 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 Halle, hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah we have been studying from the study guide hallelujah foundation of pentecostal theology amen hallelujah glory be to god and we have been talking about the doctrine of the scriptures hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah we bless the name of the lord amen hallelujah 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 glory hallelujah hallelujah yes we have been studying the doctrine of the scripture bibliology hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god we're gonna continue our discussion hallelujah uh, but we, we we were talking hallelujah about the name of the scripture and we talk about the bible and we talk about the other names you're going to continue the discussion panel about the other names amen hallelujah but before we continue in our study let us uh, bow our head and go to the throne of god hallelujah hallelujah we're gonna pray in the manner that jesus taught his disciples how to pray and that's the our father prayer our father in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors lead us not into temptation deliver us from all evil for thine in the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen we pray to your father thank you for your holy spirit and most jesus precious blood let manna to a soul be given the bread of life sent down from heaven for christ's sake amen hallelujah the last scripture we study in our last discussion of panel was Romans chapter 4 verses 3. If you have your Bible, please go me to the book of Romans chapter 4 verses 3. And it reads, For what year the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted. It was reckoned unto him for righteousness. Brethren, let's go up a little bit. Verses 1 says, what shall we say then? Abraham, our father, in other words, he's our forefather, as pertaining, in other words, according to the flesh, right? According to the flesh. As pertaining to the flesh, according to the flesh, had found, had found, right? I had a scotch tape and I did something with a scotch tape. I went to the store and the scotch tape, I can't find it, right? The lady, she lost a penny and she turned the house upside down until she found that penny, right? Now I'm not going to blame no one and 
till I found that scotch tape. Amen. Right? But if it is that someone stole the scotch tape, they have to bring it back. Because why the Bible says they will have to restore it seven times. Right? If they be caught found. Now, some people do things that think they will not be found out. But God is the all-knowing God. He sees and he knows everything. Amen. Hallelujah. God sees and he knows everything and he reveals things to his sons. Right? So we see here. Let's see what Abraham had found. You don't have to lose something to find something. I found CBI, Chosen Bible Institute. I found it wasn't us. I found it in the presence of God. I found it. Amen. It wasn't lost. It wasn't burden. In the presence of God, I found it. Freedom, and empowerment, for Jesus Christ, he lives in the of God. Mission, I found it in the presence of God. So, there is two meaning for found. When you lost something and you found it back. But and another definition of found is finding something. Amen. Finding something. And to find something, where do you look? In the presence of God. Where do you seek? In the presence of God. Matthew 6 says, he says, seek it first. The kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So as I seek in God's presence, his kingdom, because in the kingdom of God, there's so many things. There's healing in his kingdom, righteousness, holiness, anointing, power, glory. Some people say, well, new limbs, new heart, new this, new that. In the kingdom of God, brethren, in the presence of God, you can find joy. Joy is found in the presence of God. Answers is found in the presence of God. Ministry is found in the presence of God. And another word for found me, burden. Amen. Right? So after you found the ministry, you got to burn it. Amen. Now finding something and stealing something is different. Amen. There's a difference in finding something and stealing something and saying you find it or you found it. Right? Some people pay a price in order to find or found the ministry that they have. Let me tell you, CBI, Freedom Reign Empowerment, I had to pay a price. I had to starve my flesh, feed my faith, turn down the plate, be in the face of God day and night, praying, reading the word, singing. I made sacrifice, not knowing with the sacrifice that I made for the Lord. These ministry will be found, and through me they will be burnt out in the earth. Amen. So we see here. Let's see what Abraham found. For if Abraham were justified, right? For it, what does it mean to be justified, to be forgiven of your sins and receive life in Christ Jesus? Remember, Abraham sinned. 
Sarah's sin. Why? Because God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Sarah told Abraham to go and sleep with the handmaiden to bear a child. And through him committing adultery, Ishmael was born, was birthed. But Ishmael was not the promise. Ishmael is not the promise. Isaac is. Right? But even in that, while Abraham was yet sinner, God demonstrated his love towards him. God still blessed him with the promise that he promised him because God is not a man that he will lie. All his promises are yes and amen. His word don't return void unto him and accomplish that which he sent it forth to do. Hallelujah. So we see here, for if Abraham was justified by works, Brethren, he put in work. Some say, well, our work can't get us into heaven. But his works justified him. His works of righteousness. Brethren, it takes works to remain righteous. Brethren, it takes work to keep your sanity. It takes work to remain pure before God. It takes work to maintain a clean heart and, and, a, and a pure spirit. It takes work to abstain from sex before marriage. Brethren, it don't come that easy. It takes work. If we don't forgive people who sin against us, how would the Father forgive us? So it takes work to forgive someone. It takes works because why? You may have to go to that person and say, look, what you did was not right. You hurt me, but I forgive you. And I forgive myself for allowing you to hurt me or take advantage of me or abuse me. Right? It take works. It take courage. It take faith to do that. Right? Romans says the just shall live by faith. What is faith? The word of God. Right? So, he said, what shall we then say? Abraham, our fa no, fast forward. For if Abraham were justified by works, He had way off to glory. Brethren, the Bible said, from glory to glory. That's our new name. Some people, they see your glory, but they don't know your story. They don't know it took works for you to, make, to be made justified. It takes works to say, you know what, Lord? I have done this wrong. Forgive me of my sin. When you go to the restaurant, the person who is taking your order, what are they doing? They're working. They come. They don't come and just stand up there and you don't talk, they don't talk. But they know what your order is. And they just write down the order and they go back. And they talk to you, they communicate. They're working. Right? They're working the work that they were hired for. Right? So they're saying, what can I get you on the menu today? That's work. They're working. And then you say, so-so. Right? And they write down so-so. And they take so-so to the kitchen. And tell them, one one, one so-so, please. And the kitchen, now make me so-so. And when the kitchen done make me so so, so the kitchen says all oh, this up, and the waitress go and get the so so and bring it back to your table for you, right? So talking is a part of works. When you pray to God, you're working, right? Because you're talking, you 
communicating. It says, for if Abraham was justified by works, he had way off to glory, but not before God. He had way off to glory, but not before God. Not before God. Brethren, if we work our work and we are not righteous, then we are working in vain. I'm talking spiritually. If you say that you're living for Jesus Christ and you're going and evangelizing to others, yet your life, you're, you're fornicating, you're adultering. To God, your work is like nothing. Right? Yes, God can use give a call like with all repentance. Yes, I understand that. And how said Michael be touched by someone who is still living in sin and evangelizing. Yes. But there's a right way and a wrong way of doing things. You don't want people to stumble and fall and feel it's okay to sin against God and do his work. You understand? What kind of glory are you gonna get out of that? Right? You wanna be holy for Christ is holy, be righteous for Christ is righteous. Right? So you can go from glory to glory. Right? So we see here, for what seeth the scripture? Abraham believed God. Brethren, so it's not Abraham work that counted him for righteousness. We can work so much works but if we don't believe god it's not counted to us for righteousness brethren it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him will not perish but will have eternal life when we believe in jesus christ and receive him into our heart as our lord and personal savior we now become the righteous of god because jesus is the righteousness of god so we take on his righteous inheritance because we are now a part of his bloodline that only happened when we believe if we do work say we're working for god going out evangelizing laying hand pray for people etc but we don't believe god we are it's not counting unto us for righteousness if we are living a sinful lifestyle and doing the work of god and don't believe god it's not counting unto us for righteousness It said, for what said the scripture, Abraham believed God and it was counted, it was reckoned unto him for righteousness. Brethren, God desired for us to be righteous, to be holy for Christ is holy, to be righteous for Christ is righteous. Now to him that worketh is the reward. Not reckoned of grace. When you do your work, yes, there's a price that is laid up in heaven for you. Right? Maybe the glory. For some arise and shine. For the light have come and the glory of God is risen upon thee. Arise sleepers from the dead and thou will give ye light. From glory to glory, that's on your name. Right? So now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace. The grace of God is a good thing to have, to receive. Amen. But of debt, it says, now to him that worketh. Is the reward not reckon of grace but of debt? Debt, <laughs> brethren. 
The wage of sin is death. Death. When we sin, all right. When you go to college, you have school fees, so you have a debt to pay, right? When you sin, the Bible says, God demonstrated his love to us in that way we were yet sin as Christ died for us. So God sent his son to pay off that debt for us so that we can become the righteousness of God. So we can be forgiven and we can receive life in Christ Jesus, reconcile, be free from sin and slave to unrighteousness. So if you do an evil work, your reward will be hell and damnation and fire, brimstone, torment, grushing of teeth. And you do a good work and in doing that good work you believe it's counted unto you for righteousness. And there's a price that is laid up in heaven for you. Amen. Now, it goes on to say in verses 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth, right? On him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, you can believe. It take work to believe, brethren. It take work to believe. Yes, it does. It takes works to believe. To some people, it may seem not as work. But to God, it, is, it seems to him as work. It takes work to believe. Believing don't come just so easy. The Bible says, blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. Right? It has some people put in the work. Because they want to see Jesus Christ. Right? What is that kind of work? Because the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So it takes work to maintain a pure heart. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? Alright. So, listen, it says, But to him that worketh not. To him that worketh not. So if you're not working, if you're not evangelizing, you're not pastoring, you're not disciple making, you're not prophesying, you're not teaching, you're not um, building, right? <laughs> I hear you, my spirit, and whoever you be, the Lord rebuke you and the blood of Jesus against you. <laughs> you know, it has some people that's come in your life to try to kill your faith and kill your belief. Those people don't belong in your life or belong in your circle. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? Be around people who will help increase your faith. Who will believe with you. Glory! Hallelujah! Hey! You know! Be around those kind of people who will encourage you, edify you, uplift you, build you up. And not try to kill the purpose of God in your life. Kill the anointing. Kill, uh, kill the power. Kill the glory. You, you understand what I'm saying? Kill your miracle. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? Even you, they will try to kill you. You don't... Brethren... Those are in this season and this time, perilously that we're living in, those are not the kind of people you need in a circle. You need people who is on fire with God, for God. People who have radical faith. People who believe. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus couldn't do much miracle in his own, own hometown because of the lack of faith of the people. Even some of the people around him, the people was following him, and yet still they didn't believe that he was the Messiah. 
when he turned the water into wine, that still wasn't enough to, to, to make them understand and know that he is the, the anointed one, the Messiah. Even when he died, buried and resurrected, his own disciple didn't believe that it was he. He had to say, come, look at my hand. Look at my, look, look. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? So, in this season, you need people. Jesus, when he was doing the miracle, he had to put people out of the room. So he can perform the miracle because lack of faith of the people. You don't want lack of faith. You understand? Especially when God sends you an assignment to pray and to cast out demons and to heal sick and uh, you don't want lack of faith people and unbelief people and people who try to kill your assignment and your purpose and you understand and discourage you and no but I hear the person I hear you writing so evil in your heart repent go thy way and sin no more in Jesus name or you should be glad Young people like myself and others doing the work of God and not try to kill their destiny or their purpose or their calling or their gifting or their talenting or their vision. Or, you understand what I'm saying? We just bind, I hear your Holy Ghost. We bind up the spirit of jealousy right now. We mash it up, we crush it up. We smash it up. We burn it up. And we blow it away. Just like the wind of God blowing right now. We blow it in the abyss never to return. On earth or in the life. The surroundings of God people. The atmosphere of God people. In Jesus name. So yes brethren. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly. So if you don't work, you don't know the work of an evangelist, you don't do the work of a prophet, you don't do the work of a pastor, you don't do the work of a prophet, you don't do the work of a teacher, but you believe on him that justifieth the ungodly, brethren. Your faith alone counted for righteousness. So don't get vexed and mad when people not doing work. It's good to do the work I mean, because the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. But don't get mad when you see people not doing the work. They may not be doing it visibly. Visibly. That's a, is that a word? Visibly. For people to see. But spiritually, they're doing the work. They're praying. They're believing. Trusting in God. That's work. To heaven, that's work. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? So we see here, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So those that have faith and not doing work, it is still counted for them for righteousness. But we still got our work to do and we got to do that work. Amen. So that when Jesus comes back, we can hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, in whom I well pleased. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have lack of faith, let's pray for those that have lack of faith right now. Abba Father, we humbly come before your throne. You say, where two or three gather there, you will be and you will answer. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said we have faith as small as a mustard seed that will move mountains. 
So, Father, with the radical fear that we have, hallelujah, hallelujah, we move the mountain of lack of faith and unbelief from the life of your people. We tear it down, lack of faith and unbelief right now in the name of Jesus. You said the weapon of our warfare, not carnal, but a mighty to God to the pulling down a stronghold. So we pull down every stronghold of lack of faith, God. We pull down every stronghold of disbelief, God. We pull on every stronghold of not believe, non believers. Right now, we pull on the strongholds that is hindering them from believing right now. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we touch and agree with heaven right now for their faith to be increased. In the mighty name of Jesus. Increase their faith, Lord. Help their unbelief, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. You said, ask. Hallelujah. We are asking, Lord. Hallelujah. And we thank you for hearing us in a suitable manner as we call upon your name. Jesus, 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 have your way in the life of your people and increase their faith and help their unbelief. This we ask this day in Jesus' mighty precious name. We are praying. Hallelujah. With the key of David, we bind up the spirit of lack of belief, lack of faith and unbelief. We bound you and we cast you in the pit of hell in their bias and we release the anointing from it to break every yoke of lack of faith and unbelief now off of their life. Be broken now in Jesus' name. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jay. You're no Rabasa. We bless your name, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Let's go to our next scripture. Romans. No, Galatians chapter 4, verses 30. Again, that's Galatians chapter 4, verses 30. Another thing found. The Bible says in, in men found favor with God when they find their wife. Some people who found church, they keep founders, founders services, right? The day they found the church up until anniversary time, they have founders services, right? When we were lost and deep in sin, God found us and pulled us out of that darkness into his marvelous light. All right, let's read verses 30 of Galatians chapter 4. It says, Nevertheless, what seeth the scripture cast out the bound woman? Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. And her son... For the son of the bound woman shall not be here with the son of the free woman. Right? He said, nevertheless, what's here the scripture? Cast out the bound woman and her son. For the son of the bound woman shall not be here with the son of the free woman. And he said, so then, brethren, we are not children of the bound woman, but of the free woman. I remember hearing somebody saying that she will never be my children mother. <laughs> you know, some people conspire sometimes and think you don't hear their conspiracy. Right? 
Now this person may be saying this woman will not be their children mother because they figure she is bound. But why think so evil in your heart if you see someone bound? Why if you have a heart after God's own heart? Why are you not passionate and desirable to see that woman testimony go from bound to free? Baptize her. Brethren, Acts chapter 2 verses 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of his sin, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is a promise to you, to your children, to those that are far off, right? But not only that, scriptures goes on to say that we are one in Christ. In other words, we are no longer bound nor free. No longer male nor female. No longer Jews nor Gentile, but we are one in Christ Jesus. So, why it is, in other words, if, I don't understand. Help me understand this, right? If we are children of God, we're supposed to have a heart like God. The Bible says God don't desire none perish but for all to come to repentance, right? So if someone is bound in sin, why cast them away? Brethren, you know those that you all see as cast away and outcast? God is getting ready to use those people. In a mighty and powerful way. Because to you or to others, there may be a castaway or a cast out. There may be a nobody. They may be bound. But to God, he see them free. Because why? 2,000 years ago, he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Hey! You know. Lambando. To die on Calvary. So those that are bound can be free. So why cast out that woman and her son when you can preach the message of repentance to her? Somebody say rebellion. Still, why cast out that woman and her son even if they have a rebellious spirit? Instead of casting her and her son out, cast out the rebellious spirit. If you say you be a servant of God. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? Scripture don't contradict itself, yes. But sometimes you read the word of God and you question. Because God is not a man that he should lie. The Bible was inspired by God, but written by man. Who knows if man changed up the Bible to make it look like or sound like what they want. So if God don't want none perish but all to come to repentance, but man wants a woman to be cast out, her and her son, does that sound like God? No. Of course we know the devil was cast out of heaven because he tried to be like God. And him and a third, one third of his angels was cast down into the earth. Where were they cast down? Into the earth. So if people are already bound in the earth, where you want to cast them? Instead you cast out the bondage spirit, the spirit that have them bound. So that they can go to heaven. And not be thrown in the lake of fire. Why say let her and her son be cast out? You understand what I'm saying, brethren? Yes, they are gods, and then they are God who created heaven and earth. No one should try to be like God. 
But the Bible says we are imitator of God. And if we are imitator of God, of course, yes, God casts out the devil from heaven. So if somebody is in the United States and they are bound, who are you to say cast that person out from America because they're bound? And America is the land of the free? Suppose that person come so that they can receive freedom in the land of the free. Then America not doing their job. You understand what I'm saying? This is just a, 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 a Holy Ghost um, illustration. Let me don't say a Holy Ghost illustration. This is just an illustration. So why say let us cast out her and her son? Instead of saying let's gather some people who are radical faith. Who have dunamis power. And cast out that spirit that have that woman and her son bound so that they can be free, liberated. If somebody have the devil in them, cast it out. Don't cast them out. Cast the devil out. Because remember that person. God see them as his son and his daughter. He created them in his image and likeness. And they may not be recognizable because the devil have entered in. But if you recognize the devil and not recognize the person, cast the devil out and not the person. Brethren. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? So nevertheless, what's here the scripture? So, we know the scripture is the Holy Bible, the word of God. Yes, but man written the scripture. The Bible was inspired by God, but written by man. When we read different Bible, different people inter inter interpret the Bible from English, from Greek to Arabic to, you understand? The different type of languages to English. They took out what they wanted to out, translate what they want to translate, contradict what they want to contradict, put in what they want to put in. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? So we got to be careful when we read the word of God. Yes, the Bible said we want to live by the word of God because the Bible said the judge shall live by faith. Right? And it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Right? You have to ask yourself, when you read the scripture, did God say this? Let's cast out this bound woman, the same God that said. But God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The same God that say he don't desire for not perish but for all to come to repentance. The same merciful God, gracious God will say something like that. Cast out this brown woman and her son. Ask yourself this question. God is love and God love everybody. He hates their sin. The sin that have us bound. And he desired for those sin to be cast out. Not the persons. So when people. Calling God people. Cast away. And outcast. Be very careful. Because those same people you're calling. Cast away and outcast. God is going to transform their life. And they're going to be powerhouse. For the kingdom of God. They're going to be trendsetters. They're going to be. Hey, you know, rabando, randa, rabanda. Woo! They're going to take the sledgehammer word of God. And break the ground. That the enemy set upon. For far too long in the life of God people. Brethren. Be careful. 
It's good to read the word, but ask God for wisdom and discernment and understanding to be enlightened when you're reading the word of God. Ask questions when you're reading the word of God. And be careful to not cast out God, people. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? Cast out the devils. Cast out the demons. Cast out the infirmity. Cast out the sickness. But don't cast out God, people. Yes, I say God, people, because when God created creation, he said he made man in his image. And the image of God, he created them. He, she, male and female, created them. After his own likeness. You understand what I'm saying? So if God created us after his own likeness, sometimes some people are not recognizable because why? The devil took over their life. Devil took over the identity. Right? So they can't be, I, they, they are not ID. So when the prophet looking for them, the prophet can't find them. The prophet... Picking up on a, a devilish spirit, a demonic spirit. Right? Somebody saying foolishness. No, this is this is truth. This is this is truth. God used the foolish thing of the world to confound the wise. Brethren, the man who was born, no, the man by the gate called beautiful. Who was begging arms when Peter and John met him on their way to pray Peter said to the man when he begged for arms silver and gold have I not but just as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he rise up and he walk and he will walking and leaping and praising God Walking and leaping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Brethren, they spoke to that man. When he when the, he received his breakthrough, people could not recognize him. They asked question, was that the same man who was begging arms? They couldn't recognize him because why? Peter and John cast out the spirit that was in that man. That was causing him to beg arms. That allowed him to be in the state that he was in. You understand, brethren? So don't cast out God, people. Don't cast out the woman and her son because... The woman is bound. Cast out that spirit of bondage if you say that you are God's servant and his workman. And you're walking in the power of God. Then cast out that bound. You understand? Help that person to become free. Don't see them as an outcast or cast away. See them like God see them. See them like Christ see them. Free! Who the Son set free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? And yes, God see us free because why? Of what he did 2,000 years ago, he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us so that we can be free. Hallelujah, reconcile, forgiving of our sin, receive life in Christ Jesus. Free, no longer bound, no more chains holding us. The songwriter sing, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's such a blessing, praise the Lord, praise 
praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Hallelujah. Glory. Brethren. Cast out the bound spirit. Don't cast out the person. You understand? <laughs> I hope you learned something today. Amen? Because if we say we are God children, if we say we are imitators of God, yes, God cast out the devil because the devil tried to be like God. You understand? The devil tried to be like God. So God cast out the devil. And a one third of his angels got cast out with him. Where were they cast? In the earth. Revelation said the devil was cast into the pit of hell. So when God cast out the devil, he didn't cast him into hell. He cast him on earth. You understand what I'm saying? And where is the devil? He's on earth walking to and fro, seeking to see who may devour. How do you know? Because look at the book of Job. When God was talking to the devil, asking the devil, where, what, 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 you, you know? The devil said, I've been walking to and fro, the earth, seeking to see who I may devour. And God said, yes, Lord, I feel that pressing in my spirit. Prepare me for greater. Thank you, Jesus. Greater is coming. And God said that you are where my servant Job is upright and there is none like him in the earth. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? So the devil didn't get cast into hell yet. He got cast into the earth. Revelation says he got cast into the bottomless pit. Who are the key to the bottomless pit? Jesus. And people may see the devil in you. And they may want to cast you out. Instead of casting out the devil. They may want to cast you down. Instead of casting out the devil. And these people say they are servants of God. They say I'm imitators of God. They say I You understand what I'm saying brethren? They say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. What will Je Do what Jesus will do. Jesus cast out devils. He doesn't cast out the people. He cast the devils out of the people. So that the people can be free. And casting out the devil out of the people doesn't mean killing the people. And killing the people doesn't make them free. Because they, you can, if you kill them and they still have the devil, what freedom they have? You understand what I'm saying, brethren? So, ask God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And be careful who you're casting down. Because those who you see as a cast down, those who you see as an outcast, God gonna flip the script. God gonna use that person mightily. God gonna anoint that person. They might be the next king. Brethren, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Who you're casting down, who you're casting out, and who you're calling an outcast. You understand? Because those who you see as an outcast may be the one God sent to help. But it's going to be too late when you realize or come to the realization that they were the help sent by God to help your ministry grow, flourish. You understand? Oh, they were the one God sent to 
deliver help deliver you from bondage you understand so that you can be free you understand brethren so be careful somebody said be careful how you speak yes No, these things happening around us. Brethren, ask God to remove the scale and the blindness from the eyes so you can see. You understand what I'm saying? I've been called an outcast before. Yes, in a congregation of people. The pastor was preaching and he pointed at me and called me an outcast. Brethren, those who you see unfit, God see fit. Those who you see disqualify, God qualify. He don't qualify the call. He don't call the qualify. He qualify the called. And he knows my name. He called me by my name. So you may see me as an outcast, but I'm called. You may see me as an outcast. But I'm God somebody. You understand what I'm saying? He knows my name. <laughs> he knows your name. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's go to the book. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Let's go to the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 20. Eh? Hmm. Brethren, Joseph brothers, they wanted to cast him out of the family bloodline. Because he had the coat of many colors and they figure he should not have. They sell him into slavery and tell his father he's dead. Brethren, he went from pit to prison and from prison to palace, PPP. David to his brothers. Was at, he was at outcast. He was tending sheep. He smelled. But brethren, though they see him as an outcast, though they didn't want to choose him as a king, they rejected him. But God accepted him and anointed and appointed him to be king and rejected who? The people wanted to accept it as a king or to choose as a king. Be careful of those you're calling an all cast or a cast away or a cast down. Because they may be the anointed one. Brethren, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Again, let's turn to the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 20. Let's make sure we're not going over time. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Take your time with these studies because it's important. There is a study to show self approval unto God. A woman need not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. All right. So, Second Peter. I want to say to the person outside, I can hear you and the Lord rebuke you, the blood of Jesus against you, get thee behind thee. 
<laughs> First Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verses twenty. All right, so he goes on to say, knowing this first, knowing this first, that notice I said to the person, get thee behind me, said, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, right? When they were trying to distract Jesus and stop Jesus, Peter, when they were trying to distract him and stop him from going to his destiny, fulfill this, what did Jesus say? Jesus realized that the devil was influencing Peter to try to stop him from getting to his destiny, right? So what Jesus said, he called out, he didn't, he didn't call Peter the devil, but he called out the spirit that was behind Peter. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Right? No, or when actually he called out the spirit that was in front of Peter. <laughs> because Peter had to be face to face with God to communicate. Right? Well, <laughs> in order for God to see the devil, in, in other words, right? In him, in, in, in him, influencing him to say to the devil, get thee behind me. Right? Satan. Right? So that's why we got to, we are followers of Jesus. We do what Jesus do and greater also. Amen. Scriptures taught us that. All right. Second Peter chapter one, verses 20. And it reads, knowing, the, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So don't let nobody call you and tell you, let me give you a private interpretation of the scripture. What does this scripture say? Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture. Right? These scriptures, what written in here is prophecies. Yeah. A lot of people go to line and go on calls and this and that to receive prophecy from man. But when you read the word of God, there's so much prophecy inside there. There's so much. I, I'm a witness. I used to go into people lined for prophecy and for lay on and pray. No more of that for me. Because you see the contamination of spirit and the line prophecy and, and all kind of. You, you understand what I'm saying? I don't got time. For, I, I, no. Mm -mm, I fell up at that. So I come to realization if I want a prophecy, I will find the prophecy in the word of God. I have to run to nobody prayer call or nobody line to receive prophecy over my life. You understand? It says, know this first, the, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Don't let nobody call you and tell, let me give you a, a private interpretation of the scripture. Or a private interpretation of the prophecy on your life. You understand? No man cannot hinder me, the songwriter saying. No, no, no man cannot hinder me. God is not mocked. Don't be deceived. And there are a lot of deceptive prophet see. P-R-O-F-I-T-C. You understand? They see money, so they want to come say they have profit. See? You understand? Be careful, brethren. And then some go on your Facebook and scroll through and find things. You understand? And say, God say, they go by word and knowledge right the same god said oh i see yes you see where did you see it not in the spirit realm you see it on my facebook page you understand you understand i'm saying brethren be wise and don't let nobody deceive you yeah? and it goes on to say 21 for the prophecy came not in all time but the will of man But holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 
You don't speak unless you are moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Don't let people speak into your life unless they are moved by the Holy Ghost. For example, today, I come from the store and I saw a guy and I ministered to him. And why minister, after I ministered to him, I asked him if I can lay hand and pray. Because I will share my testimony of things that the Lord delivered me from. And brethren, this guy, he experienced an open heaven encounter. He experienced the wind of God. And brethren, it was just, a, it was, it was so, the moment was so, the movement, let me not say moment, the movement was so powerful. Because when I lay hand on him and I was praying, he said, I feel the move of the Holy Ghost. He said, from your lay hand on me, I feel the move of the Holy Ghost. In you and through you as you lay hand I was praying for me but then as I was ministering oh, the heaven opened brethren tears was coming to the boy eye he wasn't I, I tell you the encounter that he had he was so powerful And there's a lot of hungry people out there. He he desired to be a part of a Bible study where he can get the word of God and grow and know more, brethren. When the Holy Ghost move upon you, be obedient and do the will of God. If I was disobedient and let that guy just pass by, he would not have experienced a move of God today. The move of the Holy Ghost. I spoke as I was moved by the Holy Ghost. Brethren, God is good. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. I got somebody who's saying foolishness. To you it may be foolishness, but to God, to heaven. <laughs> Woo! Powerful. Anyhow, I'm not going to even entertain, entertain, entertain. Right? I just saw the word name entertain. That's why I said entertain. Entertain. <laughs> That's not a word. But maybe the Lord have a word for Dane, Brother Dane. Right? Maybe the Lord have a word for Brother Dane. Hmm. Entertain. All right. Now, President goes and say, and the scriptures, what scriptures? Let's read. And the scriptures, Matthew chapter 22, verses 29. Let's read. The church is yours. The church is yours. It's like I'm hearing somebody telling me the church is mine. The church is yours. The church is yours. The church is yours. All right. Let's move forward. Matthew 22 verses 29. 
this is not the first time I'm hearing this, right? This is not the first time I'm hearing this. And there's times when I hear this, I said the church is the Lord's. Every time I hear it, like I will hear it in my spirit. And then I remember one time, a mother said to me, um, Tikisha, the church is yours. The church is yours. And I'm like, I don't even question or ask her why she said that. But these days, these past days, these past few days, I've been hearing it over and over again. The church is yours. The church is yours. The church is yours. And I keep, I, I kept saying to myself, the church is the Lord. The church is the Lord. The church is the Lord. Right? But Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Not my will, your will be done. And it's God's desire for the church to have a hear, ear to hear what the Spirit says unto the church. And I hear the Spirit saying, the church. It's like the Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit of that person saying to me, the church is mine the church is yours the church is mine the church is yours all right brethren matthew chapter 21 verses 29 it reads he answered and said i will not he answered and said i will not but afterward he repented and went and sometimes you gotta be very careful because some people try to put things in your spirit to make you say because they know you are the righteousness of God and when you speak things it come to pass so you gotta be very careful at time and be discerning. Amen? Be very discerning. Amen? Be careful of what you say out of your mouth. They want you to say it out of your mouth because they know when you say it, it's going to come to pass. Amen? So be careful. Be very careful. Because not all spirit speaking is the spirit of the Lord. Spirit of man speak. The spirit of the devil speak. Your spirit speak and the Holy Spirit speaks. So you got to have discernment. Yes, you have to have discernment. So we see here, Matthew 21 verses 29 says, He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. Would you be that person tonight to repent? And go, brethren. The Bible says in Matthew 28 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, knowing that I'm with you always, even unto the end of the earth. He also said, Go and make disciples of all nations. Right? Hey! So if it is, you would like to repent and go and do the will of him that sent you. Tonight is your night to repent so that you can be justified, forgiven of your sin, receive life and be activated in that movement as you be moved by the Holy Ghost. Alright? So, right where you are. And also, God wants somebody to know that they are forgiven. God wants somebody to know that you are forgiven. Go thy way and sin no more in Jesus' name. Thy sins are forgiven thee, as it is written. Thy sins are forgiven thee. Go thy way and sin no more in Jesus' name. Let's pray for those that desire to repent. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, I feel it pressing in my spirit. 
God prepare me for greater. 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 Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Sando! Yando! Brethren, God desire. When I look up the word sando, it means sandwich. So I want to challenge those of you that are fishers of men, no, fishermen, who go and launch your net and launch your rod and catch fish. Those of you that are believers of Jesus Christ, I want to challenge you to become imitator of Jesus Christ, imitator of God, a true follower of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus did? He fed a multitude with fish and loaves. So I challenge you fishermen, when you catch your fishes, fry them, bake or buy some bread, toast them. When you toast them in the oven, you toast them in a toaster, or you toast them in a toaster oven, if you don't have that, do it the old-fashioned way. Put a pot on the fire or a platter and put it on there and toast them and feed a multitude. Some of you may say, well, I'm not called to the homeless. Brethren, you may not come be called to the homeless. A lot of people who follow Jesus Christ, they had houses, so they weren't homeless. You understand what I'm saying? You can feed the followers of Jesus Christ too. You understand what I'm saying? You can feed those that are hungry spiritually and naturally. When people come to your church, your congregation, get some fish and love after you, after you teach them. Because what Jesus did. He taught his disciple, Right? He told Peter where to launch the net. And Peter launched the net. Even though when he launched it, they said they were out all night and they caught nothing. Jesus said, launch it on the other side. So, but I did, but, but, but my foot, launch it on the other side, right? When he launched it on the other side in obedience, he felt the heaviness of the net. And they pull up and there were fishes. And what did Jesus do? He went and he go and make a meal for his disciples. He made fish and loaves. And then Jesus fed the multitude. The little boy, he had two fishes and five loaves. And Jesus blessed the two fish and five loaves. And was able to feed 5,000 and still had basket full remain. Out of two fishes, that's faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The faith of Jesus pleased God. So I want to challenge you fishermen out there that fish, whether it's in river, sea, lake, however you fish, fish, for fish. When you catch those fishes, don't just take them home and clean them and put them in your refrigerator. Season them. Fry them. Bake some bread. Buy some bread. Toast the bread. And bless. People that come to your church to get teaching, discipleship. Bless those out in the street that are hungry. You understand? Be a blessing. God bless you so you can be a blessing. He bless you on those fish. So you can be a blessing. As it is written, Jesus said to Peter and them, He said, follow me and I will make you officials of men. You want to be officials of men? You want souls to be saved? Then do what Jesus did. Feed a multitude with those same fishes that you're catching in the sea or in the river or in the lake. Feed a multitude. It's good to feed them spiritually, but some need to be fed naturally also. Amen.
that may be the word for Brother Dane and Brother Herbert because I heard his name in my spirit on today. Mark chapter 12, verses 24. Let's read Mark chapter 12, verse 24, and we're going to round up our studies for today. Brethren, I am not Jesus, but Jesus live in me. And if I tell you to do something, it's because it worked. I have a counter experience. I made fried fish and bread and I went out and blessed those that were in need of our meal. And in blessing them with natural food, I was able to bless them with spiritual food and they received salvation, eternal life, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So follow me as I follow Jesus and you will become fishers of men. You understand? Notice I said, follow me as I follow Jesus Christ and you become fishers of men. Notice I didn't say, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I'm not your maker. Jesus Christ is your maker. Jesus Christ is my maker. He made me a fishers of men because I follow him. I did what he did. He said, we're going to do what he did and greater also. So I challenge you this night. To follow me as I follow Jesus Christ and you will become fishers of men. Do what Jesus did. So as I did what Jesus did, do what I do with the fish and the loaves and you become fishers of men. I'm speaking to fishermen out there today. Those that are fishermen out there today. Those fishes are resources. That you can use to win the loss at any cost for God's son Jesus Christ. It costs you to go and fish for fish, right? It costs you time, right? It costs you bait, right? It costs you gas to get to the fishing location, right? So, follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. In making the fish and the loaves and going and bless those that are hungry, spiritually and naturally. And you will become a fisher of men. Amen? Mark chapter 12 verses 24. And it reads... And Jesus answered and said unto them, Do ye not therefore err? Because ye know not the scriptures. Brethren, a lot of people don't know the scriptures and that's why it's good for us to know the scriptures. Not just be hearers of the scriptures, but doers of the word of God. That's why we got to study to show self approved to God. A woman needed to be shamed and divine the word of truth. Amen. That's why we got to seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all the answers that we need, the revelation we need is going to be added unto us. When we do this thing, we will not err because why we know the scriptures. So it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Do you not therefore err because you know not the scripture? Brethren, I challenge you to know the scriptures for yourself and you would not err. You will not sin. You will not fall into temptation. It says, neither the power of God. Brethren, if you read the word of God and get to understand the scripture, we will understand and know the power of God. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, And you shall receive power. And after that, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and you're going to be witness unto the boys in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. When you have the power of God, you are able to walk right, talk right, live right. When you have the power of God, you are able to do miracles. He 
heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out lepers. And when they say cast out lepers, it's not talking about cast out the person itself. It's talking about cast out the spirit of leprosy in the person. Brethren, read the scriptures and understand it clear, carefully, clearly. You understand what I'm saying, brethren? So stop saying that we cast out these people because they're bound. Or cast them out because they have lepers. Cast out the spirit that have them bound. Not the individual, but the spirit. And after you cast out the spirit, make sure that they are filled with the Holy Spirit. A righteous spirit. The spirit of truth. The spirit of life. Brethren. And then it goes on to say, so, yes. So it says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. Brethren, read the word of God so you can know the power of God. Read the word of God so you can know the scriptures. Read the word of God so you won't sin, you won't err. Brethren, read. Read, read, read. Now I said, read the song I just sing. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you grow, grow, grow. So read. And you gain knowledge about the of the power of God. You gain knowledge of the scripture, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. And you will not because the Bible said that what have I hid in my heart? Don't just read the word, but hide his word in your heart. That you want error, that you won't sin against him. Amen. This has brought us to the end of our Bible discussion, brethren. If there are any that are not saved tonight and you say, what must I do to be saved? I'm here to tell you that you can take the Romans road to salvation. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, O Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made known unto salvation. And if you would love to receive salvation on tonight, the free gift of eternal life that you don't even have to pay a price for because Jesus Christ already paid that price for you and I so that we can be free. No longer bound, no more chains holding us. Be saved, set free. If that's you tonight, we want to touch and agree and pray with you. We only challenge you and ask that you believe because all things are possible to those that believe. My late bishop, he always used to sing the song and rest in peace, bishop. God bless you. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. If you hold time for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
only believe. All things are possible if you only believe. So I challenge you to believe on tonight. You don't go wrong. You won't go wrong. Believe it. Believe and receive it. God's going to perform it tonight, today. Hallelujah. So if that's you right where you are, pray this prayer out loud with us. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. He is the Son of God. He died, buried, and resurrected on the third day. I confess that you are Lord. And I ask that you come into my heart and save me of all my sins. Take my name out of the book of death and write it in the Lamb book of life. Create in me a clean, pure heart and place your Holy Spirit, your rightful spirit, your righteous spirit within me. And lead me to the way everlasting. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. You said this prayer. Congratulations. You know have the free gift of eternal life i challenge you to go thy way and sin no more and as you go may the lord be with you may his face shine upon you may be gracious unto you may turn his face towards you and give you peace shalom i challenge you to read your bible pray every day so that you can grow because in seeking first the kingdom of god and all his righteousness all the answers you need will be added unto you Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. Brethren, know the scripture. And to know the scripture, you got to read. So I challenge you to read the scripture so you won't error. You won't sin against God. Read the scripture so you can know and understand the power of God. Amen. If you don't have a church room, I challenge you to pray and ask God to lead you and guide you. And I pray that the Lord will lead you and guide you to a good Bible-based teaching church that teaches true doctrine, not religion, nor tradition, but true doctrine where you can learn more about God, grow towards God in spiritual maturity so he can use you in a mighty way. Because we all have a purpose and a calling in our life. And I pray as you find that church that you get to learn, grow, get trained, equipped, and taught, and teach all that you need to know. Find your purpose. Be able to fulfill it so that when Jesus Christ come back, you will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant in whom I will please. Well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. I love you all in Jesus. Jesus love you all too. I pray that you all have a blessed and peaceful and stressful weekend in the Lord is favor Friday, faithful Friday, Friday, Friday. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us for us before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God of Savior, more majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you in Jesus. Jesus love you all too. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Weekend in the Lord. And God bless you until then. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for choosing CVI Chosen Bible Institute. Hallelujah. The launch. The Sonship Launch Program. Hallelujah. Sonship Launch Program. The Sonship Launch Program. Get ready to launch into your sonship. I love you. And Jesus loves you too. Tell somebody about the salvation plan of Jesus Christ so they too can be saved and experience the love of God for themselves. And receive the free gift of eternal life. Amen. Until then, Shabbat Shalom. Good night. God bless. Remember, we are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a peculiar people to show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So show forth your praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises, hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. I love you all in Jesus. Jesus love you all too. Until then, Shabbat Shalom. And God bless you until then. Goodbye. Again, oh, my name is Mr. Keisha Jeffrey, your instructor here at CVI, Chosen Bible Institute. Nice to meet you. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure. Hallelujah. 
teaching you the scriptures on tonight as we study foundation of Pentecostal theology, the doctrine of the scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you all in Jesus. Jesus love you all too. Until then, Shabbat Shalom. God bless you. Good night.